Hey, why haven't you given me any money this month? Do you have any idea how much I need to spend? I've been swamped with work, okay? I forgot to send you the money, but I'm dealing with it now. Remember that in just two months, I'll be completely out of debt. You don't have to keep reminding me of that, do you? Do you think I enjoy being stuck with a useless person like you? You're beyond ungrateful. How dare you insinuate that I wasted my time giving birth to you and raising you just so you could be successful today? Enough! Stop with the sarcasm. Anyone who overhears your words would think you actually love me. You think you're clever, huh? You even had the audacity to teach me about life. But guess what? I need another $5,000 this month. $5,000? For what exactly? This month, I want to buy your brother some new shoes and clothes to prepare him for work. And I also want to provide him with proper nourishment so he can keep his strength up while job hunting. He's been feeling down and losing weight because he can't find a job. I can't stand seeing him like this. And how is that my problem? Didn't we agree that I'd give you $10,000 every month until it adds up to $200,000 as a thank you for giving birth to me? After that, we'd cut ties and never bother each other again. I'm not obliged to give you more money to support him. Besides, isn't he just unemployed because he dreams of being a manager or department head rather than taking any job available? How can you say such heartless things? He's your brother. You're flesh and blood. He has a decent university degree and he's an extremely talented and capable person. How could he settle for some low-level employee position when he's treated as an errand boy? He deserves more than some menial job where he's treated like a servant. Huh? Don't think that your little amount of money gives you the right to say whatever you want about my son. <sighs> whatever you want, but I won't give you any extra money. Oh, hold on. I've thought about it again. $200,000 is probably not enough to compensate for my love, effort, and sacrifices in raising you. Moreover, my son is about to get married. If he doesn't have a car or a house, society will look down on him. So before you cut ties with us, you better buy your brother an expensive car and a fancy house. Otherwise, don't even think about escaping from me. What? That was never part of our agreement, and you know it. Well, I've been thinking. Aren't you the manager of a prestigious company? With your high salary, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Just a few more years and you'll be able to fulfill this obligation, won't you? That's not the point. You clearly understand that I have no responsibility or obligation to cater to your son's life. If it weren't for my father's dying wish, instructing me to take care of you and your brother until he can stand on his own, I would have cut ties with you a long time ago, Kimberly. <laughs> You're such a heartless monster of a child. How could you prioritize the words of a dead man over mine? The one who raised you? Because he treated me fairly, unlike you. So what about your poor dead father? Leaving me to work tirelessly to provide for you and your brother. And now you treat me like a burden. Kim, don't you feel any shame when you claim to have taken care of me? Have you ever treated me to a decent meal or shown me the love a mother should? No, you treated me like a servant. Don't forget how cruelly you treated me. Ugh, why bring up the past? I did what I did to toughen you up, to teach you how to survive in this world. It was all for your own good. Haven't you always listened to your father? Then obey his wish. Give me money, take care of us, and provide for my son and me for the rest of our lives. Dad said, until your brother comes of age. He's already 25 years old now. When will he finally grow up and take responsibility for himself? I don't care about that. You're my daughter, and you will do as I say. You will take care of my son and help him live a comfortable life. And if you can't buy him a house and a car, why don't you use your position as the head of the department to get him a job in your company? You can't let him struggle in this cruel society, can you? Hey, 
Are you kidding me? This is absurd. I won't use my professional position to indulge in your unrealistic demands. I don't have time to joke with you. You have such a prestigious position, yet you can't even secure a job for your own brother? You're completely useless. This is not how it works. This is a professional environment, not a favor bank. Besides, your son lacks the qualifications and work experience necessary for the position. The recruitment process is rigorous, and I can't just hand him a job. But he's exhausted from his job search. He's constantly rejected by reputable companies, forced to work in lowly positions, and treated like dirt. I won't let my beloved son suffer. But if he works at your company, you can protect him. No one would dare bully him then. Everyone starts from entry-level positions and works their way up. He needs to learn the value of hard work and perseverance. Being overprotective won't do him any good. Ha! <laughs> so now you're trying to portray yourself as mature and independent, huh? Treating this family like strangers, as if we're not connected by blood. What a waste of my love and all the hardships I endured to give birth to you and raise you all these years. But my dear daughter, I won't blame you for not loving me. I understand. It's all my fault. When your younger brother was born sick, almost on the brink of death, I simply thought you were a strong and understanding child, capable of taking care of yourself. Therefore, I focused on loving and pampering your brother more. But I never imagined it would make you hate me so much. It must be all my fault. All right! Stop dwelling on that old story. Fine. This will be the last time I help him. Promise me that if you make any more demands, you will pay me the full $200,000 and disappear from my life. <laughs> All right, my dear girl. But remember, make sure to get your brother a good, respectable job. My precious son is not meant to be a mere errand boy or an ordinary employee somewhere. I can't make that decision alone. I will reach out to HR and arrange an interview for him with me and my boss. If he passes the interview, he will be assigned a suitable position based on his abilities. That's the best I can do. That's acceptable! As long as you're there to protect him, no one will dare to bully him. Make sure to tell him not to reveal our sibling relationship at work. I don't want others to make assumptions. I'm sure you also don't want your son to be labeled as incompetent and useless relying on his sister to secure him a job, right? Fine, fine, don't worry about it. Oh, I'm thrilled to hear that my son is finally going to have a job. <laughs> I need to make preparations for him. Hey Kim, do you know where James is? I can't get in touch with him. Did that jerk run away after causing all this trouble? Why are you using such harsh words to scold him? Can't you see how scared he must be? He didn't want things to turn out like this. He did it for the sake of our family. As his older sister, shouldn't you try to comfort him and find a resolution instead of berating him? What? So you already know what happened and yet you're still defending him? James might have to go to jail and pay double the contract value, which amounts to one million dollars. And I could also be held accountable and face an investigation. Why would anyone want that? It's just a stroke of bad luck. Besides, it's not as catastrophic as you're making it out to be. You just need to compensate the company for the contract, and everything will be fine. Do you think it's that simple? James colluded with the construction material suppliers, replacing the materials my company purchased with cheaper, lower quality ones and pocketing the price difference. He was in charge of procuring materials for this construction project. If it weren't for a surprise inspection conducted by the corporation today, it would have been difficult to uncover his deceit because he always knew my inspection schedule and could easily prepare in advance. Do you realize that building a structure with substandard materials can lead to serious incidents and damage my company's reputation like this? He didn't do it on purpose, did he? 
He was lured into this by the sales side. Unfortunately, he got caught. You know he lacks experience in work and life, so it's understandable that he made a small mistake. Just a small mistake? The company has already involved lawyers and the police. Can you still defend him? Do you realize that this could result in up to 10 years of imprisonment? The police are already investigating, and James won't be able to escape the consequences. He directly signed the receipt for the fraudulent goods, and the supplier admitted to the fraud as well. Not only will he have to go to jail, but I'll also have to take responsibility for this mess. Tell me where he is. He needs to face the consequences of his actions. Enough! It has come to this point, and you have to find a solution instead of placing all the blame on your brother like that. What other solution do you propose? The only way now is for James to turn himself in and accept the consequences of his actions. But remember, this is his responsibility, and I won't beg for him. Ariana, my dear daughter, I know you love your brother and me. You've always done everything for our family, right? But I'm running out of options. It's beyond my capability to fix this. Actually, there is still one way. Since you're James's boss, if you take the blame for this, the severity of the crime will be lessened for him, right? <laughs> what, what are you suggesting? I mean, if you collude with the seller, steal money for materials and then manipulate the orders to make James unknowingly become an accomplice, your crime will be seen as less serious. I think your sentence could be reduced by half. So you would only have to go to jail for five years, and my son would only need to pay a fine. What? Are you asking me to plead guilty for James and go to jail on his behalf? Exactly. He's your brother, and it's only natural for you to help him. Besides, what's the harm? What's the harm? My goodness. My only mistake was placing my trust in the wrong place. I never thought that no matter how flawed you both are, you would dare to engage in illegal activities or harm the company. I was foolish to believe that James could change for the better. Don't blame my son and speak of him as if he's useless and incompetent. Everything is your fault. In terms of work, you haven't been strict enough in managing your subordinates, allowing such exchanges of materials to happen. In terms of family, as the older sister, you couldn't even provide a house or a car for your younger brother, forcing him to struggle with a meager salary. And because of his low income, he can never afford a house. So I suggest he find a quicker way to earn more money. So, all of this is your fault, and now you have to take responsibility for it. What? What did you just say? Are you the one who instigated James to do these despicable things? How could you? You're willingly putting your own son behind bars. I always thought you made my life miserable, but I never expected you wouldn't even raise your favorite son properly. How dare you speak to me so rudely? Is this how you treat your own mother? I can't believe I put in the effort, money, and love to raise you, and now you treat me like an enemy. You claim to have worked hard to raise me? Let me remind you it was you who forced me to drop out of college to work and earn money to support your son's education. You said that girls would never be as successful as boys and that I would end up getting married and becoming a stranger. So there was no need for further education. Do you remember how I had to beg and plead with you to let me continue my studies and take up part-time jobs in the afternoons and even night shifts just to pay for my own education and support your son? And whose fault was that? It was your father who said you should take care of us instead of him, right? You're such a weirdo. Why do you listen to him more than me? While you always favored your son, saving the best for him, Buying new toys and giving him whatever he wanted? I had to make do with hand-me-downs from my cousin or items I picked up from charity boxes. 
I always had to eat the leftovers after your son finished his meal, and I spent my days doing household chores. Thankfully, I had a father who loved me, but he didn't have much money and was constantly oppressed by you. All he could do was comfort me and buy me ice cream whenever he saw me unhappy. Oh, don't say that. I still love you. I always think of you, care about you, and worry about you. So let me ask you this question. If you can answer it correctly, I will plead guilty for James as you wish. Fine. Ask away. I'll answer whatever it is. What day is my birthday? What kind of question is that? Do you think I don't remember your birthday? I am your mother, the one who gave birth to you. Then don't take too long to answer. Um, September 6th, right? That's James's birthday. Ah, I meant October 15th. Yes, <laughs> I'm absolutely sure. That's your birthday. Oh, well, then it must be... Stop it! I know you don't remember anything about me. It doesn't matter. I've made up my mind. You have to plead guilty for James. You're just a girl. You'll get married and become a stranger to me. And even if you go to jail, it won't matter. But James is different. He's a boy and he will be the one to take care of me when I'm old. He needs a bright future, a successful career, and a clean record. He can't go to prison. You can stop with your nonsense now. Do you remember our deal? What deal are you talking about? If you ask me to do anything more than finding James a job, then all previous agreements, including the $200,000, will have to be returned to me, and we will cut ties immediately. Furthermore, you and James will have to move out of my house. So what? What are you gonna do, huh? I have no money to repay you, and I won't leave this house. You have no right to kick me out. I will make a scene and show everyone what an ungrateful, disobedient daughter you are. Oh, I haven't revealed everything yet. Of course I won't demand the money back because both you and James will have to earn another one million dollars to compensate my company. And as for leaving the house, I won't be the one to ask you to leave. I'll leave it to the police. You can sit there and wait comfortably because the police will come to pick you up. What? Why are the police involved in this? Do you remember when you accidentally confessed that you instigated James to steal money from my company? Well, coincidentally, the police entered my room at that moment to request cooperation in their investigation, and I conveniently let them read the entire conversation. So, Kimberly, what am I supposed to do now? I can't plead guilty for your son whether you like it or not. But here's some good news for you. You'll be able to accompany James in jail and not have to worry about accommodation and food for the next... Hmm... Let's say at least five years. You... How dare you betray your own mother! Ariana, you can't do this to me! But we already cut ties! Ah, no. It's much deeper than that, Kimberly. From this moment forward, I declare that you are no longer my mother. I refuse to be associated with someone who is willing to sacrifice ethics, integrity, and the well-being of others for personal gain. Our DNA may be the same, but our values and principles couldn't be more different. How... how can you say such things? We're family, Ariana. You can't just disown me like that. Family is supposed to be a source of love support, and trust. But you've shown time and time again that you're willing to betray those ideals. I won't allow myself to be dragged down by your immoral actions any longer. I choose to surround myself with people who uplift and inspire me, not those who bring me down. Ariana, please, I'm begging you to help me. I know I've made terrible mistakes, but I genuinely love you more than anyone. Even more than James. You're my daughter, and my heart aches at the thought of losing you. <laughs> Begging for help now, Kimberly? After all that's happened? It's quite ironic that you claim to love me more than James. 
Your words hold no weight when your actions have shown a different story. Ariana, please, I'm begging you to listen. I know I've made mistakes, but deep down my love for you has always been greater than anything. Please, Ariana, I'm on my knees begging you. Don't turn your back on me. You're my daughter, my flesh and blood. Kimberly, love is not a bargaining chip or a means to escape the consequences of your actions. I need to prioritize my own well-being and the well-being of others. I'm sorry, but I can't be the one to save you from this. It's time for me to move forward without you. So here's how things turned out in the end. Kimberly and James, well, they didn't get off easy. The judge threw the book at them and sentenced them to a solid stretch in jail. James got slapped with a 10-year sentence, while his dear old mom, Kimberly, got a solid eight years. Ouch. As for me, well, I managed to dodge that bullet. The investigation cleared my name, and I was found innocent of any involvement in their shady schemes. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> it was a huge relief, let me tell you. No bars for this gal. But you know what? I decided it was time to make a fresh start. I couldn't stay in that house anymore, with all the memories of deceit and betrayal lingering in the air. So I packed my bags, sold that place, and bid farewell to that chapter of my life. Good riddance. I landed in a new town, ready to hit the reset button. And guess what? Fate had a little surprise in store for me. I met someone special, someone who saw past the scars and the baggage I carried. They loved me for me, flaws and all. Talk about a breath of fresh air. Together, we embarked on this crazy journey called life. We laughed, we cried, and we built something beautiful. It's amazing what can happen when you let go of the past and open yourself up to new possibilities. Love found its way into my heart and I couldn't be happier. So here I am, sipping my coffee and reflecting on how life can throw curveballs at you. But hey, I made it through. I'm stronger, wiser, and surrounded by love. The darkness may have tried to bring me down, but I emerged victorious, ready to embrace the future with open arms. Here's to new beginnings and writing our own happy endings. Cheers. <laughs>